ASM 301, Ag Systems Management. Stephen Poe in the University of Arizona. We're going to talk about land surveying today. Now we're going to work through the problems. We're going to start by describing the field notes and what the field notes look like. We always want to start by just having our squares drawn up there. We're going to start with station, back site, HI, foresight, and elevation. So this is the way we're going to start by setting up our field notes. Now what's the survey going to look like? Well, if we're going to do a profile leveling survey, we're going to start by setting up the instrument. Okay? And the instrument's going to be set up <coughs> something like this. So we'll take this the instrument and we'll set it up. It's going to be perfectly level. We're going to get it at a comfortable height so that we can look through the instrument and we're going to be able to identify the place that we're going to. And the very first site that we're going to take is called a back site. So a back site is a rod reading on a known elevation. And here's our benchmark. This benchmark can either be established or be actual, but the benchmark is, in this particular case, is probably an assumed elevation of 100.0 feet above sea level. So that's where we're going to start with our survey. So we need to be able to ten, then continue. So here's a picture of actually starting out with a backside reading onto our benchmark. We're going to turn the instrument around and we're going to sight onto our turning point. In this case it would probably be TP1, turning point 1. So back sight is a uh, reading on the rod of a known elevation. Foresight is an unknown elevation. So the turning point would be an unknown elevation. Then we need to continue that. We would be working with something like this. So this would be a differential leveling survey. We would start right here at benchmark one and we would go around in either direction. But you see we'd have um, turning point one here. So we'd take a rod reading, the foresight, after we complete the back sight, we pick up the instrument, we take a back sight reading first, and then a foresight reading on TP2, turning point 2, and we continue around the surveying loop until we finished. Okay, and we close back on the original point to determine if we have closure and how close we are if we made any mistakes. If we start out at 100.00 feet and we do the survey all the way around here, and then we finish with a foresight reading on to benchmark one, what should the elevation be? Well, it should be 100 feet. Is it going to be? I don't know. I guess it depends on how good you are at surveying. But it'll be something close, hopefully. So, if we were going to actually write down the procedures, it would look something like this. Set up the instrument, take the backsight reading on BM1, establish the turning point, take the foresight reading, move the instrument, set up again, of course each time it's got to be level, take the back sight on the turning point, establish the next turning point, and continue on until you reach the last station. Now what we want to do is we want to focus on how do we get these numbers, okay? And in order to do that we actually have to take a look at reading the rod. So the rod looks something like this and we're talking about a Philadelphia rod. You need to take a look and it'll have these great big red numbers here and these are full foot values. The smaller numbers like the 1 or in this case the 9 they'll be tenth foot and then each of these little guys over here is equivalent to a hundredth of a foot. What you need to remember is that we read to the points or the edges. So if our rod reading right here was to this point, that would be 3.00 feet. Okay, we're actually going to now complete our survey. We're going to start here with benchmark 1, and the assumed elevation is 100 feet. So we go to our field notes which I've got the whole sheet here, but to make it easier for you, I'm going to just 
stack our actual survey on top of it for as long as I can so that we can actually refer to both of them at the same time. Benchmark 1, the elevation is 100.00 feet. Then we're going to take a backsite reading, which is on the known elevation. So we come up here to backsite. We write down our rod reading, which is 3.03 feet. And we're going to move kind of fast here after we kind of uh, get the hang of how things work. But our very first thing we'll do is we'll put up here plus and minus because our mathematical sign for backsites is plus and for foresights it's minus. And then the other formula that you might want to remember is that the elevation plus the backsite is going to equal the HI. And then the HI minus the foresight is going to be equal to the new elevation. And we'll just write plus right in here. Uh, plus and minus. So foresight signs are minus. Okay? So we've got our backsight reading. The very first foresight reading is on turning point one, and that is going to be uh, 3.86. So we've got to come down here and write TP1. The foresight reading is on 3.86. Now we've got our math helper up here. Elevation plus the back site equals the HI, so we take the elevation here plus the back site to give us our HI, which is 103.03. .03. And then for our new elevation, it's the HI minus the foresight equals the new elevation. So that's 103.03 .03 minus 3.86 to give us our new elevation of 99.17 on turning point 1. Okay, so this spot right here is at 99.17 feet. Now we pick up our instrument, we move it to a new location, we take a backside reading on our turning point because now it's a known elevation, and our backside reading is going to be 2.60 feet. Okay, and we have the opportunity to do more math, elevation plus the back sight equals the HI. So in this case, 99.17 plus 2.60 is going to be 101.77. Okay. The new foresight reading is 4.53 on turning point 2. Okay. Foresight reading, 4.53. Three. Now we take the HI and we subtract the foresight to get our new elevation and that's going to be 97.24. Okay. Backsight reading onto TP2. The backsight reading is going this direction. 4.22. Come up here. 4.22. Elevation plus the back sight gives us our new HI, 101.46. Okay. Next is our foresight on benchmark 2. So this was evidently our objective is to get to benchmark 2 to find out the elevation. So our foresight reading is right here, 6.16. It's an unknown elevation at this time, so we're going to write foresight reading 6.16. Okay. After we have the 6.16, we can now take the HI, subtract the foresight, and get our elevation at that point, which is 95.30.
So, hopefully, we've done the survey properly. We now know the elevation of our new point, which is 95.30. Now we're going to go back to our starting point and find out if we made any mistakes. So the next reading is going to be a foresight reading because we're going to now, uh, excuse me, it's going to be a backside reading because we're now known elevation. So the backside is 6.43. And the back site plus the elevation is our new HI. And in this particular case, it's going to be 101.73. Okay, we're making pretty good progress now. Move this up just a little bit because we're going to start losing some of our numbers here. So I can't see them both at the same time for you, but we'll uh, go the best we can here. The next point we're going to have is the next turning point up here which should be turning point three. All right, turning point three. Okay, so we're going to have a foresight reading on turning point three. Four point four four. And we're going to do the math. HI minus the foresight is going to be the elevation and that's 97 to finish this up pretty quickly now, turning point 3, the backside reading here for TP3, I'm going to draw that in because it's not there. It's going to be 3.85. Then the backside plus the elevation is the HI, and the HI is 101.14. Next is our foresight reading on TP4. And the foresight reading we're going to get, 2.96. Once again, the math, HI minus the foresight, new elevation, 98. The elevation um, now plus the new back site. Uh, the back site is going to be 5.11, and that's going to give us our HI, which is 103.29. Well, you can see where we're at now. We're set up here. We have one final reading to make. It's back on the original benchmark. So at this point in time, this is a foresight because it's an unknown reading, and we get 3.30. So right up here, 3.30. That's a foresight reading. It's real important to notice how we always skip this box right here because our very first reading, of course, is going to be a back sight, and our first foresight reading is going to be down a lot. So if we make this mistake and put the foresight in there, our math is going to be messed up. Now, one last thing to do, the HI minus the foresight to give us our new elevation. And if we do that, what we come up with is 99.99 feet. Okay, our survey is done. We have to do a little bit of math yet. What we want to do is we want to sum up the back sites. And if we do that, we add up to 25.25. We're going to sum up our four sites. And if we add those up, 25.24. Okay. The difference between those two is 0.01. And the difference between our starting and our ending elevations is 0.01 as well. That tells us that we didn't make any math errors.